Hey there, my beautiful friend. It's Patrick Allman from Stop Doing Nothing here, bright and early for you today. Uh, this is, happens to be a Saturday morning. I've got the really good coffee cup, and in case you couldn't read it, it says you can have results or excuses, but you can't have both. Today we're going to talk about results. I'm going to show you something really cool I learned several years ago uh, using uh, other CRMs, but now I'm going to implement it using Go High Level, and that is interaction with Slack. Now, what I'm going to show you is a very simple example of how to build a very basic two-way Slack integration with your, um, with your Go High Level app. And what this will allow you to do is to, number one, to send a command from Slack over to your Go High Level account to have Go High Level interact with the uh, application and then return something back to Slack. Now, I've built this several times myself, but you know, uh, the steps um, the steps aren't always in necessarily the right order from the beginning. So as a tech guy, I'm gonna say, you're probably gonna see me make a mistake or two while I build this, but I've built it before. Just sometimes I get the steps a little bit out of order, but the end result is, is it always works? So if you expected me to go from step one to step 10 perfectly and never make any mistakes, then you are going to be sad or mistaken. But let's get into it. First of all, what do you need? You obviously need a Slack account. Here I am signed into my Slack account. I am over on the api.slack.com page, and you get access to the Slack API page by default when you have a Slack account. I just wanna be on the page where I know there's your apps at the top. Um, I also have some other tabs open. I have my Go High Level workflow list, workflow list open, because I'm gonna be working in workflows. I have my Go High Level contact list up and going because I wanna see my contacts as I'm doing this. I have my actual Slack channel open here. I picked a uh, in my Slack account, I have here one called our account called Random, um, which is the uh, which is the channel I'm gonna test in. And then over here, I have my actual Gmail account open so you can see what the account's actually doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through building the app creating an automation to engage with it, and then actually testing it. And again, this is just some very basic, and what we're gonna do in this particular case is we're going to build a quick Slack slash command to just create a contact based on an email address. So the first thing we have to do is create a workflow. And the reason we have to do this first is because I need uh, the webhook, or what's also known as an HTTP post, to give to Slack, okay? So I'm gonna come over here, create workflow. We're gonna call this, um, let's give it some A's in front so it sorts well. So we're gonna come over here and say AAAA, uh, testing Slack workflow on, we'll say 323, okay? So we're going to put that there. I always like to personally turn allow reentry on. Uh, save early, save often, always be saving. So the first thing we need to do here is add a webhook in because the slack slash command is going to trigger a webhook here. So add new trigger. We are going to click on inbound webhook and right here, it's going to give us the webhook we need. And so um, if you've never built anything with a webhook, one of the things you need to realize is you actually have to test this webhook immediately in order to be able to save this. For example, if I was to go to save this right now, I can't save it because I haven't mapped anything to my webhook, which means the webhook hasn't, um, nothing's come in for me to parse and save the data coming into the webhook, okay? So I'm going to take that URL right there. I'm going to copy it, control C, or I'll just leave it there for right now. So I've got that webhook on screen. We're going to pause there. Let's hop over now to Slack and create our application. Okay. I'm already signed in. So I see my, your apps here. I'm going to click on that, get a list of my apps and create a brand new app. So we're going to call this new app. Um, uh, well, right here, you use this one right here called uh, from an app manifest. I don't understand this one from scratch. I just always use app manifest. Uh, which workspace, you know, obviously which uh, Slack account you're going to be in. It's going to be my main Slack account. Click on next. It's going to give me some information here. We're going to call this the Gumby app. Gumby app. Okay. This is the Gumby app. Uh, besides that, I don't ever change anything here. If you're going to do some advanced things, there might be some documentation on how to change this. But for the most part, I just name the app right there. Gumby app. I click on next. It says, hey, this is what you want. Create it. Okay. 
So here's my Gumby app. I mean, I'm in my Gumby app here. You can obviously have a variety of apps here, but I'm in my Gumby app, and there's all kinds of cool things you can do. Again, this is meant to be a very basic demo of how setting this up. So all we're going to do right now is uh, use a slash command. Obviously, if you come up with a, something major, a major cool application, you can deploy it to the Slack workplace. Uh, you can sell it. You can obviously do all kinds of things. I am building something internally for my company to use. So we're just going to go with a simple Slack slash command here. Create a new command. Uh, you know what? Let's actually call the command Gumby. I like that. So we're going to say this is the Gumby one. Okay. Request URL. This is where we put in that webhook we got from Go High Level. Okay. Right there. Short description. My cool Gumby app. And usage hint, um, send one item email address, okay? So I will be able to use slash Gumby inside of Slack to trigger something, okay? So click on save here. Okay, it looks like it's saved. Now I actually have a working slash command. That's how easy it is to create a slash command inside of Slack. So once that's set up, You'd think that I could come over here now and save this, right? Nope, still can't save it because I've never actually fired the webhook to save it. So to do that, let's hop over here to Slack and say slash Gumby. You know what? I better reload this because I just created a brand new app. So let's reload this real quick and say slash Gumby. Let's see if I can get this right. And we'll, we'll say Patrick Almond uh, plus 806 at gmail.com. By the way, if you didn't know it, uh, if you have a Gmail account, you can always put a plus sign after the first part of your email address. And anything you want, it'll end up back in the same Gmail account. Comes in very handy for testing. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, no, okay, so I can't. Uh, oh, you know what? You know what I have to do? is I have to, uh, I believe I have to install the app. Yep, I have to install the app. My okay, I took a brief pause there in editing because I had actually installed, I've done it so many times, I've installed too many apps inside of my Slack, and when I was going to install it to demo it to you, I, um, I screwed up because I had like 10 apps installed, so I had to go clean up Slack real quick. So once I've got this, um, uh, once I've got this all set up, and for the Gumby app, I've still got my slash command here, you then have to install the app into your workspace. So I'm going to click on Install App, Install to Workspace. Um, what do you want the app to be able to do? Just some very basic permissions here. I'm going to click Allow, and that should be installed inside my Slack account. So here it gives me uh, OAuth, which I really don't need, but I can hop over now to um, Slack, and I should be able to type in my slash command. There it is. Send one item, email address. And of course, all this information right here comes from everything I filled out on the Slack information here, right? When I first set that up, right? Okay, so come back over here to um, Slack. We'll say Gumby, and in this particular case, my data is just an email address. So again, I can use Gmail test addresses all day long. I always like using the time. So it's 8.09 in the morning, and there we go. So I can send that, and it's going to say success. It received it, okay? Nothing's happened. It just fired off that webhook, which is what we really wanted. So I'm going to come back now to my uh, workflow here, and I'm going to fetch sample requests, which means I'm going to pull in one of the tests I just sent, or the webhook I just sent in. And here's the one I just sent in at 809. And what it's gonna allow me to do is it's gonna allow me to look at the data that came in. And this is all the data that Slack sends over right here. All kinds of information. What's really important is that text one right there, okay? There's other information here. You can see the user that sent it over. You can see all kinds of information here. But the thing that we really want for this example is the uh, is the text right here. So we're going to save that trigger. And again, with campaigns, we save early, save often, uh, create contact. Uh, that's going to be this. Whenever you have like an inbound webhook to create a con, it, what usually happens is the next step is create contact. So I'm going to say for this contact I'm going to create as a result of the webhook, I'm going to 
fill in the email address right now and the email address I want to and of course you can pick all kinds of information here you know contact information calendar information custom fields but of course we want the information from that first webhook right there so I'm gonna click on inbound webhook and this particular one that was stored in text remember that text is the field that has our email address so I'm going to basically say I want to create a brand new contact and I'm going to save that action and I'm going to click on publish and click on save. The, when you build uh, workflows, at least when I build workflows, I like to build them in small little chunks to make sure each little piece works before going over the next piece. This workflow may eventually have 50 pieces. However, test each little piece one at a time. That way in the future when you have problems, you know, oh, I'm having a problem in step 10. I know step one through eight work. Maybe it's step nine or step 10 kind of thing. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. The workflow has been saved. So I'm going to run a, uh, another test real quick because my, my, this whole thing actually hasn't, I don't believe it's actually fired yet. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, this hasn't actually fired yet. That first payload I sent over was just a test payload. So I'm going to hop back over to Slack here and I'm going to run another test. Gumby, and this one we're going to say is Patrick. Almond plus 812 at gmail.com. It's going to come back with just a default response. Hey, I triggered it. I got it right here. How do I know I got it? Well, number one, let's hop over here to our enrollment history, right? Oh, there it is. Fired off right there. Cool. So, you know, obviously it wasn't anything when it came in, but now it's a real person. But I also know if I come over here to my list of contacts and refresh it, inside of go high level dun, dun, dun. what will i have i'll have the patrick almond plus a twelve one right there so what you see me do basically is the the very basics of creating um an application i mean we could stop right there that's the gumby command i've created now i can create new contacts and i don't ever have to step foot inside go high level what i'm going to show you now is part two is getting a response back okay getting a response back to um, slack from go high level because maybe you want to send back a contact ID or maybe you want to send back other information to slack from go high level okay so the um, we don't have any more work to do over here inside of slack slacks given us everything we need including the response how to respond to this so first thing we have to do is let's go look um, back in that uh, inbound web hook right here and remember all this information that slack gave us right here it gave us some really cool information. This one right here, response URL. That's the webhook we send back with information, okay? So we have an inbound webhook basically, and then Slack gives us an outbound webhook or a webhook to send for go high level to use that information back to Slack. So I'm going to grab, actually I don't have to grab anything. Go high level made this really easy for us. So response URL, trigger ID. Okay, so I've got a response URL, good. So now what I can do is I can respond back to that webhook. But you know what? Real quick, I'm going to um, I'm going to send an email real quick. So each test we fire gives me another email from name. It's always good here to use the user information and not hard code this information, by the way. So we're going to say it's coming from the user and we're going to say we got the test. And whenever I test stuff, I like to um, date time stamp it. So I'm going to say um, we got the test at date and we have the test at uh, time. Where's the time? Time, 24 hour format. That's the only format that counts, right? So it's always good to make sure we can actually fire off stuff. So fire. So we're going to send an email, create a contact, send an email, and now we're going to, first of all, I'm going to test this again, okay? Just to be sure I got this right. I always, like I said, I like to test the little individual pieces. So come back over here, run a Gumby, Patrick Almond at 815 at gmail.com. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah, sometimes it doesn't... Um, and we'll just we'll just we'll just use this one right here. Sometimes it, the plus sign Slack doesn't like that and messes it up. So let's send it in. Let's make sure that Slack got it. Okay, so Slack got it. Okay, 
Um, how do I know? Well, number one, we can come over here and check our contacts, 812. Uh, so I should have what, an 813 or an 814 right now? Is that what I should have? 812, oh, uh, you know what? Oh, and I take that back. We gotta, we gotta run it again. Oh, I just did Patrick Almond, that's right. Okay, so this one, look, we got it at 323, 815. So now we know we can fire off emails also in workflows based on the Slack command coming in. The last part here is really advanced. This is where we send the response back. And this one may take me a minute, but I learned something when I was setting this up in Go High Level versus other CRMs. We have to send a webhook back. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we um, are not going to send a webhook we exactly. We're going to send a custom webhook because we need to send information back in a certain format called JSON, J-S-O-N. So a custom webhook allows us to do that. So again, um, Slack has already given us the information. The URL, which is the webhook, well, you know what? That was, Slack gave us that when the webhook came in. Remember that? It was response URL. So that's the response back. Slack gives us the webhook to send the information back to. And then down here, I'm going to give the very basics of, very basic of information. And I believe the very basic information is just text. Yeah, I think it's just uh, text. And then in quotes here, I'm going to put something like, um, you know, we're just going to say, back to stock, we're going to say, got it. Your new contact ID, contact ID is, and then of course we're going to substitute that information right there. Okay, uh, it's giving me a red uh, dot here because this is improperly formatted. Since I only have one line, I've got to take my comma off the end. If you have multiple lines, you have to have a comma on every one except for the last one. Okay, so I'm not a JSON expert, but I know a little bit, I know a little something, something. So we're going to save this. So now basically we have a three stepper here. If you ever have to send an outbound webhook back, put it towards the bottom of your workflow because I've learned that Go High Level will hang up in this step until it completes successfully. So whenever I put my email below down here, what was happening is I wasn't getting my emails if this custom webhook was taking a while. That's just a little bit of advice here. Try to put your custom webhook stuff towards the end of a workflow. Okay, let's test this one more time. So. We are going to, what a time is it, 8.18? Hop back over to Slack and say, do another Gumby test real quick. Patrick Almond, let's see if it'll do it this right. We'll say 8.18 at gmail.com. So what should happen? Whenever you're testing software, before you send the information, you should already imagine in your head or on paper what the test should and should not do. So what should this do? This should create a new contact, this should send an email, and this should send a response back to Slack confirming that the contact was created. So send that in, get a good response back from Slack that I actually received it, and then hopefully I will get a second one. Ah, back right back from the workflow. Your new contact ID is HNK, yada, yada, yada. So that is go high level talking back to Slack. So I can now hop over here to my contacts. Uh, this should be what, Patrick818, if I'm not mistaken. And there's Patrick818, and is that indeed my contact? Right here, HN, here's my contact information up in my web browser. A URL, HNK0PF. Let's hop back over here to yeah, HNK0PF. So there you go. Again, creating the Slack slash command, that took us all of maybe a minute or two. Uh, the workflow, pretty easy. Uh, I always like to have, like I said, re-entry on. And, but then, of course, you can do all kinds of things. You can pass in probably multiple parameters. You can do if-then-elses. You can probably delete contacts. But you can get, you can get really fancy on this. So I'm going to kind of curious to see what you develop. Um, as always, please do me a favor. If this was good, share it. Subscribe on YouTube. Tell me what you want, and I'll create videos for you. And always, always, please turn notifications. But that subscribe on YouTube would really help me out. That's our social currency. Help me out. Subscribe on YouTube so I can grow my audience and keep making more great videos for you. As always, thank you for watching. It's been Patrick Allman from Stop Doing Nothing.